coming up on The Sporting Chef. Today on the show, pizza, deer, bear, jugs, hogs, and buddy. Show y'all something I'll come up with. What do you get when you find the best fish and game chefs? Cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television. Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, The Sporting Chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. You know, here in America, we eat a boatload of pizza. 93% of us eat at least one slice of pizza every month. Most people eat 46 slices a year, and there's three billion pizzas sold every year. Making pizza at home is kind of confusing to a lot of people because it starts with dough. And dough is very, very simple. It's, it's active yeast, it's flour, it's sugar, it's a little warm water. There's not a whole lot to making dough. And if you go to the sportingchef.com website, there's a real simple recipe for making dough in a food processor. If you don't want to do that, you can buy the pizza crust at the store or you can buy this fresh pizza dough, which is actually really easy to work with. I have a little flour mixed with some cornmeal that I'm going to work this into. And I've got three different pizzas I'm going to make today. I've got a salmon and shrimp pizza. I have a pheasant breast. That's a smoked pheasant breast pizza. And then I've got the meaty pizza with bear sausage, venison salami. They've all got a bunch of other stuff on them. But first off, I want you to see Stacy Harris because she has an incredible recipe for a very classic venison bourguignon. I'm gonna be making venison bourguignon. All that is is peasant stew. All I have here to use really the ingredients are onions and some carrots, some parsley, garlic, a little bit of um, tomato paste, thyme, and some bacon renderings, and I'm gonna put bacon in it too. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with a hot skillet, and I'm gonna be browning my hind quarter. It's just stew meat pieces, you know, of venison. I'm gonna season this with a, with a little salt and pepper, and I go kinda heavy on the salt. Use about half of, about a half as much pepper. When it gets really hot, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of our venison down in it, and I, I usually just use one of my pieces to test it. It's ready, you get to hear that good sizzle. All right, you're not gonna let them touch while they're in the pan because you want a good brown on your meat, and if it doesn't get a good brown on it, then it's just gonna be, it's not gonna have a good flavor, and it's not gonna have that beautiful color. I have a little salt and pepper on it already, but I can see that I need a little bit more on it, and it kind of helps to brown it. My venison is brown. It is an absolutely beautiful color. I'm doing this in batches so that I didn't crowd the pan, because had I crowd the, crowded the pan, it, it would not have browned. It would have steamed. Now I'm going to add the rest of this meat. I'm browning this in bacon grease, and I rendered down about 10 pieces of bacon, and that's what I'm cooking this in. Sometimes I need a little bit extra. My grandmother told me, never be without a jar of bacon grease next to your stove. My meat is completely brown. So now we get to move on to the next stage of making this scrumptious meal. And I'm going to pour in the onions, the carrots. My onions and carrots have caramelized, and now I'm gonna go to the next step. All I need to do is to pour in my beef broth. Any robust red wine will do just fine. My stew meat. I'm gonna pour back in this luscious bacon. I'm gonna put in some garlic, tomato paste, my favorite ingredient, thyme. And I'm gonna let that simmer for about an hour and a half. It's been a couple of hours. Now I'm gonna add some mushrooms that I've already sauteed in some butter. If yours is not thick, you can do a little mixture of flour and water equal parts. And I might pour just a little bit in here. I don't really need a lot because mine is kind of already thick. But you can judge and, and you can decide how thick you want it. You need to bring it to a bowl if you do that to thicken your dish. 
I'm going to ladle a little bit of this into my bowl. Do you see how scrumptious that is? And I just have to do this. I know that you're not supposed to play with your food, but look at this meat, at how it's just so tender, it just falls apart. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of parsley on here, and I'm gonna put the rest of the parsley in here, turn the heat off, and stir it up. And there you have venison bourguignon. Scott, can you say bourguignon? And can you say it with a southern accent? Now you know that that venison bourguignon looked absolutely delicious. Stacy knows what she's doing. We're really lucky to have her on the show. This is some of that artisan dough that I bought at the store. You put it on a flat surface. You just kind of knead it. You don't want it to be too thick. At least I don't want it to be too thick. Once you get it semi-stretched out, you just, you don't pull it. You just kind of let gravity do its thing. And I'll tell you what else is gonna do its thing. It's my new Camp Chef Italia pizza oven. Camp Chef has a pizza oven that sits on top of their two and three burner stoves. This guy here is a standalone. You can put it on a tabletop and it gets up to 700, 725 degrees. You can tell this is a brand new one because the stone itself is very, very clean. And it's not just for pizza. This is great for cooking steaks. You put a few quail in there and they'll be done in no time and they'll be crispy on the outside and nice and tender. And when I come back, I've got a whole lot more. Bear meat, frozen jugs, feral swine, buddy, and pizza. All ahead on The Sporting Chef. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm making pizza, and I've got my pizza dough kind of pressed out. You'll notice it is more of a free-form pizza. I'm gonna start with a little sauce on this first guy here. This is gonna be my smoked pheasant breast pizza. On this one is smoked pheasant breast, some different colored bell pepper, Parmesan cheese on this guy, Next up is gonna be shrimp and salmon. And this is just thick sliced wild coho salmon and some nice Baja shrimp. I'm gonna put the sauce on top of this guy here. You know, it really doesn't matter what you do. It's all very, very forgiving. I've got some red onion on top and a little bit of black and green olives. This one's gonna get a little bit of feta cheese. Next up is my meat lover's pizza. Sauce first, thin layer. These are some grilled mushrooms, grilled cremini mushrooms. This is venison salami, some fresh garlic, and this is bear sausage. This is a buddy of mine shot this bear here in Northern California. This is cooked bear sausage. This is from a very young bear. If you've ever had sausage from a very old bear, you may notice that that old bear sausage can be a little bit pronounced in flavor. This is a pepper jack and cheddar cheese mix. And speaking of bear sausage, my friend Tiffany Haugen has got two great quick ideas on what to do with your bear at home. All right, we've got some great bear meat here. It's been aged and we're gonna do a couple of things with it. One of our family favorites is bear jerky. We did a simple salt sugar brine. We're gonna put it in our Camp Chef smoke vault for about five to eight hours, and then it'll be ready. We're gonna put the meat on the racks. We're gonna put smoked chips in the smoker. Any type of chips work for this recipe. We wanna keep our smoker at about 200 degrees. It's been about six hours, and some of our pieces are done here. So we're gonna take those off, and we're gonna go on to the stew. Another really simple recipe we're gonna do is a basic bear stew. Now bear can vary in flavor and texture, but there's one sure way it's gonna always turn out great, and that's with slow cooking it, either on top of the stove, or you can use a crock pot, or even a Dutch oven out in camp. When you're cutting up the meat for the stew, you wanna cut it in cubes, about one inch size. They can, it can vary, but you wanna clean that meat up. Get all the silver skin off, get all the excess fat off, because again, that can affect flavor and texture as well. Bear meat can be really soft, so cutting it partially frozen helps with this cutting process. There are only a few ingredients in this stew. We've got onions, potatoes, and carrots. In this stew, we're gonna add two onions chopped, about five to six potatoes, 
four carrots, and really it's stew, so any veggies in there will be great. The steps to putting the stew together are really easy. Just saute the onions in the two tablespoons of olive oil, dredge the meat in some seasoned flour, and you're gonna get that nice and browned. This adds a really good flavor to that meat, and if you're gonna be putting it in the crock pot, it really is beneficial to brown that meat prior to putting it in the crock pot. Once that meat's browned, put in about six cups of meat or vegetable broth. Add your carrots and potatoes, cover that, and bring it to a rolling boil. Once that stew reaches the boiling point, you're going to want to turn it to a low simmer and cook it for about an hour to an hour and a half until your meat is tender. Our stew's done and it's time to serve. Tiffany, that's great information. And of course, you could use those same two techniques with any kind of antler game as well. On this guy here, on my shrimp and salmon, I'm gonna put some high mountain salmon rub. And over here on my meat lovers pizza, I've got the Italian herb by high mountain. And now I'm headed for the pizza oven. But first, I wanna show you these peels, this big spatula looking deal here, the cutter and the infrared thermometer are all part of a kit that you can get from Camp Chef. And believe me, it's worth having it. They make things a lot easier, at least in theory, we'll find out. All right, now I wanna put this in and I wanna get it scooted all the way back to that right-hand corner. So I'm gonna go in deep, pull it out that way. Next, right next door. All right, this isn't gonna take very long, but I do want that crust to be nice and crispy. I don't like a doughy pizza crust. This is also great with duck, any kind of waterfowl. If you use duck breast, a duck breast pizza is great. And if you've ever vacuum packed duck, the liquid goes through and it makes it hard to seal. Well, guess what? I have a solution for you. What would happen if I took these moist mallard breasts and put them into a food saver vacuum bag? Well, the chances are the moisture in these mallard breasts would come out through the opening of the bag and it wouldn't seal. What I do with fish fillets, duck breasts, pheasant, deer steaks, is I put them on a tray and freeze them. And once they're frozen, you don't have to worry about them breaking the seal. You put them into the food saver bags and into my Game Saver Titanium. You can only imagine how much better a seal that is once it's frozen. So the tip here is to freeze it first, whether it's homegrown tomatoes in the summertime or five half mallard breasts, freeze it, squeeze it, and it'll last a long, long time. And now, Alan Clemens has a tip for you. Scott, when you get through drinking your moonshine, because I know you like a little nip now and then, keep your jugs, fill them up with water, just enough to, uh, you know, so when you freeze it, it won't burst. Put this in your cooler, and you'll have a solid block of ice. It cools down the inside of the cooler before you leave and kind of gets that going. And then when you put in your bag of ice, and your other cold stuff, it keeps everything cooler longer. Instead of just grabbing a couple of bags of ice, dumping them in the cooler into a hot cooler with a hot 12 pack of sodas and then taking off and it all melts and by the time you get wherever you're going, you got a big old slushy mess and you're going, doggone it, this thing didn't stay cold. Freeze some of these things, throw them in your uh, cooler, throw them in your little bag to go in your blind with your lunch and whatever else and it'll stay colder longer and you can reuse these, or you can recycle them, or you can shoot them with a 270 and watch them explode. Next up, C-Dub's Hog Stew, Buddy's Fancy Dessert, and Pizza. You know, nothing like a nice fire pit on a cool evening. I've got a warm pizza oven over here, and I wanna check it because I like it browned, but I don't like it burnt. And if I burn it, of course, that's my fault. I just want to check the edges here. And you know, you may need to, oh my goodness, that's ready to go out. That looks beautiful. Let's check this one. That is beautiful. And I've got some cornmeal in with the flour, so that will get you a little burnt edge, but I'm telling you, that's 
perfect, perfect, perfect. And of course, why would I want to overcook shrimp and salmon? No, I wouldn't. Making pizza is a great way to get kids involved. You put out a whole bunch of ingredients, fire up your pizza oven, let them make their own, of course, don't let them burn their delicate little fingers off. Now, next up, I've got C-Dub, and you know C-Dub. We love C-Dub, and we do love his green chili feral swine stew. Need some cornbread, and maybe a cold beer. Okay, today we're making a green chili stew, and we're for our meat, we're gonna use feral hog, and we're going to use a brand new Camp Chef Dutch oven. We don't have to season these Dutch ovens anymore. We can take this right out of the box and start cooking with it, so let's go. And we wanna start by browning our meat, and we're gonna use a little bit of uh, olive oil. I've got my feral hog here, and this is hindquarters uh, that we cubed up in about one inch cubes. We're gonna get our uh, pork in there. So we're gonna add some uh, garlic that's already chopped up. We have some onions. We want those onions to sweat just a little bit. Uh, we're not gonna caramelize them. And what these are, are home canned green chilies. Everything just dumps in. And I also had one little jalapeno I put in there to add a little bit of extra zap to this. Our potatoes, pre-cooked and cubed. And our seasoning, we have basil, oregano, salt, pepper, and cumin. All pre-measured. You know, you come in from hunting or fishing and uh, you know, you don't wanna spend a whole afternoon cooking. If you, the more prep work you do at home, the easier life is going to be especially if you're the camp cook, okay? We have some diced tomatoes. We're gonna put in there. And just for a little extra flavor, we uh, diced up some fresh uh, green chilies and jalapenos, so we're gonna put those in. We're gonna add a bottle of water. Put the lid on our Dutch oven. And we're gonna come over here to the cooking table where we've already got our charcoal going. So I just want a nice, even heat where I have water in here. It's, uh, I'm not gonna burn anything. Okay, now what we're gonna do to help speed this up is we've got lots of charcoal. So I'm gonna dish some up on top. Now, I don't wanna leave it like that. These briquettes will be more efficient if I just line the rim. We're gonna put about four briquettes on top. And all we have to do now is wait for the charcoal to take its course. Our green chili stew has been on for about 35 or 40 minutes. It's ready to go, so we're gonna take it over here and dish up. Okay, and to go along with our green chili stew that we made with feral hog, we have some homemade cornbread and dinner's done. You know, I'm going to put just a little bit of coarse sea salt on my pizzas. C-Dub, you did it again. That stew looks delicious. And yes, it needs cornbread. And yes, a cold, frosty mug of your and my favorite beverage. The pizzas are done. I pulled them out. I didn't want to burn them. This is the smoked pheasant pizza. Over here on the shrimp and salmon pizza, that feta cheese is just melted just enough. The meat lover's pizza, I've got some fresh basil and fresh tomato. I like to go fresh with the basil and tomato on a pizza. I don't really like a soggy cooked tomato on my pizza. It's a personal preference. You can do whatever you do, and Buddy is gonna do whatever he does making dessert. Dessert? Okay, it's Buddy T. We need to have a dessert, don't you think? Let me show y'all something I'll come up with. It's a real basic crepe recipe. It's a cup of flour, two eggs, a cup of milk, put a little sugar in there, stir everything up real good, melt two tablespoons of butter. So it's pretty basic crepe, but it's a heavy crepe. But in Texas, we like stuff a little bit heavier at times. Added pecans to it. I don't think you can find a crepe recipe anywhere on the internet that's got pecans into the batter. I want to put about a quarter to a third of a cup of chopped pecans. What I used for a filling was apples, cooked them down in butter, added some cinnamon, some half and half, a little cornstarch, milk, thicken it up, 
Then uh, give that wow factor, stir it in some vanilla yogurt. Tell you what, you look at that thing with them apples inside there, and there's a vanilla yogurt cream sauce. Ain't nothing but yum on this plate. Hope you all try it, and I know you're going to enjoy it. It's time to eat, or at least see what these pizzas look like when they're cooked. Stay with me for just a couple more minutes. So today I made some pizza and I want you to check out Camp Chef's website. These pizza ovens, once you get them, it's not one of those things that you put in your backyard and you forget about or one of those kitchen appliances. This is something you're going to use all the time. And again, they have another unit that sits right on top of their two and three burner stoves. I've got some of the Michael David Seven Deadly Zins, which will go extremely well with these pizzas. And I want to thank the people that made this show possible. I've got Alan Clemens, Stacy Harris, C-Dub, Tiffany Hagen, and of course, Buddy. I hope you check out SportingChef.com for recipes, videos, and more information about where to get cookbooks, check out websites from all the people on the show. We also have Hunt Fish Overstock that has great deals on outdoor gear. I'm Scott Laystaff, the Sporting Chef, and I appreciate you watching the show and hope to see you next time.